Welcome back to Fox 5's On the Hill live this Sunday morning. We want to turn now to some global affairs and latest news out of Russia and China. Today, China's Communist Party begins its 20th National Congress. It is expected to give President Xi Jinping a five-year term. A third term for Xi would be precedent. It would make him the most powerful Chinese leader since the legendary Mao Zedong. Now, the war in Ukraine, meanwhile, Two Russian volunteer soldiers fired on their fellow troops, killing 11 and wounding 15. Yet another sign that the Russian offensive in Ukraine is not going the way the Russian President Vladimir Putin would like it to go. What does that mean here in the United States? Well, we want to welcome in Mario Mancuso, who's a former Secretary of Commerce and an Iraq War veteran. And it's our pleasure to have you here this Sunday morning. Let's start with China. Um, giving this individual this much power is something that's going to shape this country, our country and their country for a while, because China has a lot to say over the U.S. economy. How was he able to get that much control over the Chinese government and really cement his position now for what looks going to be like another five-year term? So first, thank you for having me. You know, this is not a surprise. You know, uh, Xi ascended to uh, become general secretary of the CCP in 2012. For the past decade, he has consolidated his position within the CCP. He has extended the power of the CCP over China, over the Chinese economy, over Chinese civil society. And, but frankly, he was placed in that role as general secretary in 2012 to do some of that. And once he got there, he used his power. I mean, he's an inside player, frankly. Mm -hmm. He's a very talented politician to consolidate his power. That's got profound effects on the trajectory of China in the world and how assertive China is, and frankly, on our security and on our pocketbooks. There's two parts to the China question. That's always the economic one and then the military one. Let's start with the scarier one, which is the military thing. China has been ascendant over the last couple of years. But is, is that a separate track from what their goal is on the economy? Because clearly they do need the United States to still be in a position where they're buying Chinese goods and getting that money from the United States. But what is their goal militarily with these motions that we've seen from them over the last couple of years? So a lot of it has become clear in the last, I'd say, five years. I would actually say their goal is integrated, that their security goals and their economic goals are actually linked. First, they want to be the top dog in the international system. They believe that they were there historically, we're talking you know, over hundreds of years ago, and that after a century of humiliation that they don't have that role. What they are trying to do is first become um, ascendant in East Asia, which is where 50% of the world's GDP is, which is why the United sh States should care economically about China's rise. But they're also trying to do is become military ascend militarily ascendant in East Asia. And you know, Tom, we talk about Taiwan. Taiwan's a long way away. Mm -hmm. But Taiwan is an island that sits like an aircraft carrier in the South China Sea. And if China gets Taiwan, Japan is in danger. If Japan is in danger, Hawaii is in danger. It's a straight shot to the Western Pacific. This is not something that has really kind of hung over the head of Joe Biden. Past presidents have been asked this question before, that if the Chinese government were to move on Taiwan, will the United States move in to defend it? We've gotten signals from the White House that said, yes, that the United States would defend Taiwan. But the implications of that would probably spark a war which we have not seen in half a century. Absolutely correct, which is why U.S. leaders, let me be clear on this point. I think the United States, I'm virtually certain the United States would defend Taiwan. In my personal position, I was an Army officer. I was at the Pentagon. We must defend Taiwan. But not only because it's important to Taiwan. Frankly, my position would be is that we have to defend Taiwan because it's important for America. It's in America's interest. It's in America's security interest, and it's in America's economic interest. But you're right. If that war were to occur, it would be very difficult to balance, uh, to manage the escalation on both sides. And again, getting back to the economy, given how intertwined the U.S. economy now is with China, would that be a tipping point that the, could possibly plunge the United States into an even more severe economic crisis than we're already in right now? It could be, but both countries, for better or worse, are preparing for that contingency. So one of the things that uh, Xi Jinping has done has tried to make China less dependent on export markets, both to the United States and to Europe, two large export markets for China. 
but we're also starting to selectively decouple in the United States. We're trying to make our own supply chains more resilient, particularly around technology and other things. And we have about a minute. When we t spoke at the beginning of the segment, we mentioned that the war in Ukraine for Russia is not going well, and we are now having these incidents within Russia. How secure is Putin's position in his job as this continues to drag on and continues to drag on not in a good direction for Russia? We obviously don't know. My own view is that he's less secure than he's ever been, right? So if I were to tell you today, Tom, do you think Putin's going anywhere? You'd probably say probably not. If I said, look two years in the future, do you think he's still going to be there? I think both of us would probably say it's kind of hard to see. Putin is increasingly isolated. I think he's weaker today. He may be around for a while, but that's certainly on his mind. And we, he's a, weaker today, but may, make him even more dangerous than he Exactly, before. because yeah. I think he identifies his own survival with Russia's survival. Mario Mancoso is a former Pentagon official, and we thank you so much for joining us today to give us some uh, in-depth analysis on this situation.